So, Liam, welcome to the captain's call, mate. And uh, it's good to have you as a skipper of the Reds. And we spoke, obviously, last week with a man you know well and played some rugby with, Rob Simmons. But um, talk us through what it's been like being back in Super Rugby Australia. Yeah, it's been great. Um, just having, you know, something to aim towards again. Uh, isolation and that was a bit weird, doing all this training and, and you know, not really having an end date in sight. So... Uh, it's just been great having fixtures to look forward to and, and an actual championship to try and build towards at the end. I was watching, obviously, a lot of games before uh, COVID hit and, and obviously affected a lot of sports, not just in our country, but around the world. And, and the Reds were showing some real positive signs, weren't they? Particularly in attack, I think you're averaging over 30 points a game. And it just was just getting tipped off in some of those, those narrow margins in terms of losing. But since you've come back, Post-COVID-19, there's been some really positive signs, hasn't it, on both sides of the ball? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we had, you know, one of the top attacking, you know, stats before COVID. And um, I think we're still probably trying to find our way back to that. We haven't quite hit our straps like that um, again. But, it, you know, that took seven rounds of building to get towards where we were um, by the back end of that and, and a lot of pre-season too. So um, I think that'll come back pretty soon. Uh, pleasingly, we've we've sort of sorted out our defensive system and our shape. So, um, I mean, on the weekend, we, we you know, were down uh, to 14 men for 20 minutes, you know, an intercept try, which was unfortunate. But um, other than that, our defence held really strong for the most part. And um, I think that's just goes to the ticker of the boys and, um, and sorting a few things out with our system. So once we get that flow going back in our attack, we'll be um, well on our way, I think. Yeah, you talk about it takes seven weeks to sort of start feeling as though you've got a real nice momentum and rhythm in Super Rugby. But now this is kind of a sprint, isn't it? Like it's over 10 rounds, potentially 12 if you make all the finals. Um, what's the key to sort of getting, I guess, the mindset? And from a leadership perspective, what's what's the key to sort of get hit, hit the ground running a bit quicker than, say, a normal season? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um... I think just consistency is what we've got to aim for. And, you know, that's why it's you can't afford to, to drop easy games and stuff like that, especially at the beginning of this. Um, you know, we're still undefeated at the moment, which is really good for us. We um, could have easily bowed out of that Rebels game and, and found ourselves with a loss, but we found a way to bring ourselves back in and, and work hard for a, for a draw, which is, you know, a lot better than a loss. So um, you're just going to have to pick up as many points as you can and, um, and that just comes with consistency and, and finding that detail week, week in, week out. Um, we've been probably guilty in the past of, of getting a good win and then, and then probably coming in the next week a bit underdone. So uh, we're just looking at, at trying to make sure we're accountable each week and building those details and uh, just put out 80-minute performances um, more often than not. Yeah, well, you talk about that game on the weekend. It was, it was the first Super Rugby extra time, so to speak, the golden point kind of thing first score of wins. What, is, there, is there a different sort of strategy like involved in that? Like when you're talking to you as a captain, like a, from a team perspective, are you wanting to receive the ball from kickoff? Are you wanting to kick the ball off? What, what, what are you trying to do there when you get to that extra time moment? Because it, I think it's a really exciting and a really positive step in rugby. Yeah, it was. I think definitely um, kicking off is more of an advantage. Um, I, as you saw, it was a bit of cat and mouse sort of between us and, and the Rebels just trying both teams trying not to make mistakes in your own half more so than actually um, forcing attacking rugby just because, um, you know, the prize is, is so much, much grander. If you, if you knock on or give a penalty away in your half, um, that's just an easy opportunity. And given that it's golden point, not golden try or anything, um, teams are going to slot up for that drop goal or that penalty goal, um, you know, which we sort of did when we got around a penalty around that 50 metre mark. And, um, yeah a, couple, short. yeah, a couple inches in that one to the right, a bit short. But um, that's what we're looking for. You're looking for sort of penalties in that zone. And it's a lot easier to force that through your defence, I think, than risk making a mistake with your attack. So um, that seemed to what the strategy was from both teams on, on Friday. Now, you talk about your team and, and then how you're yeah, undefeated so far, um, which, is, which is a really positive start to Super Rugby. A young squad, there's a few experienced members in there as well. Uh, midfield, obviously your back three I'm thinking of as well. But from your perspective, what's it like leading a good, young, talented squad such as the Reds? Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's a massive honour and, and the boys are just, you know, have enthusiasm and, and want to just keep learning. I think that's the main thing that there's, there's no real egos in our squad, no big dogs. We've got, a, you know, a few real experienced heads like 
like Robert and, and you know, Henry was invaluable for us this year. Um, when he spoke, just everyone listens. And um, so it made my job a whole hell of a lot easier um, where I could just pass over to those guys and, and know that when they've got something to say, um, it'll be really well received. So um, I don't have to work too hard on the guys getting up for training or anything. They're still young, bodies are fresh and, and just like being around each other. They're all, we've all come through the program a bit together and um, some guys have been playing since, you know, I've been playing with uh, Scott Young since grade seven. So, mm. um, you know, there's, there's guys like that and pretty much everyone in there are, are best mates. And uh, it just makes getting up for training and working for each other which is probably one of our strengths, yeah. um, really easy. And um, I think my job's mainly, and, and along with the other leadership group, is um, just to try and iron out those creases and make sure we're focusing on our detail and uh, because the, um, the passion's right there with those boys. Yeah, your answer was great there. You spoke about togetherness as a team, which is something you know you have it um, and you don't, it, it's just there. And sometimes you use the spirit um, and, and, and that, that team harmony is really, really important. But you also spoke about having the ability to have other leaders around you to support you as a captain. Critical things in teams, aren't they? And I think from your perspective, and this is me talking about you, I think you're a leader who leads by example. You're probably a man of not too many words and, and more about doing. So it's good to have that balance, isn't it, of people who, when you need it, you can call upon them to give the right communication to the team to keep everyone on track. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, and if I'm the only one barking things around, it, you know, my, my words become a bit meaningless and um, you just don't want to be the one talking the whole time. So having guys like that to step up, you know, Rabs leads our attack really well. We've got guys like Hegarty who's, who's been around for mm. a long time, played 70, 80 games, super rugby. Um, Henry, you know, speaks for himself. Uh, but we've got a lot of other guys stepping up too. Luke Khan's been really impressive, you know, taking what he's learned from other guys in the Wallabies and, and um, just applying it to that. And, yeah, it just, it just makes my role um, a lot different. Like you said, I, I like to think I lead more by example. Um, you know, I, I don't need to be yelling the whole time or anything like that. And um, I've got guys who are happy to step in and do that too. And when someone needs um, to be pulled in, we're happy to do that. And we've got guys as well who will just call each other out on things. So, um, yeah, it just, it just makes it on the field. Mm -hmm. I think when I ask them to do something... Uh, they're all happy to do it because they know any any one of those boys asking them to would do the exact same thing for them. Oh, it's good to hear. And, and, and the environment's very, very, very very important. And, and your coaches and, and obviously the, the organisation has a lot to do with, with helping you do that. Um, what, what can you say about your coaching group that you have with the Reds, particularly with, as I said, you've, they've developed a lot of young players for a number of years and you can see the fruits of that labour now. Yeah, yeah. Our coaches sort of like us have had to develop along the way. You know, Thorny, when he, when he came in, um, was a very different coach to what he was now. Um, he, he, you know, he always says he, he's not so much a coach as much as, you know, almost like a tell you what he did as a player and show you stuff that worked for him and hopefully adapt that into your game. Um, but when he came in, like, we were a really young group. He, he made a point of bringing young guys through and, and giving them experience along the way so that we learn. Uh, valuable lessons but now he's able to sort of step back a little bit give us the reins a bit more because we've had those experiences we've we've learned from you know things that he's done uh tight losses you know he's not on the field there with us so he knows that um now he's had to step back a bit and and uh, let us take the reins which has uh been a huge development for him as well and um just makes our our playing group a lot more confident in themselves so um, and backed up by Jimmy and Toddy there, um, they're just some of the most technical, uh, you know, Toddy's watched more film than anyone in Australian rugby, I reckon. You know, he used to be an analyst and um, has finally got his, his gig at coaching and he's been really, really good for us defensively. Um, Jimmy, you know, he's, he's won titles with the Reds, he's been with the Wallabies. Um, he's a quirky dude and he's, he brings a lot of fun to our group, um, which is a good balance with the coaches as well. Uh, and yeah, it's it's just they all complement each other really well, and have found a good way to to balance each other out now. Well, that quirkiness and fun you you talk about bringing that to the bring that to the team, bring that to the training group is really really important. But talk about some of the characters within the Reds. Are there some you're happy to share some funny stories about? Yeah, yeah. There's um, yeah. There's, like I said, they're all they're all really good mates. So they just like um, you know not being uh, taking themselves too seriously. Um, Luke Khan and Wilson have a fair bit of a crack at each other. They um, they're pretty funny, and and Wilson just doesn't shut up at all. So, 
um, he's a good fella to have around. Always brings brings the vibes up, and and um, yeah, Luke Khan's a funny guy. He'll he's good at um, bringing in the, the sort of quieter boys and and you know call them out sometimes and make them join in, and um, so that's really good. You got guys like Taniella who who is um, thinks he's pretty much famous on Instagram and stuff. So. <laughs> he's, he's an influencer. Yeah, yeah, he's an influencer. Yeah, um, and JP, mate, him and Ruan always had some great yeah. videos of them scaring each other. Um, I know this year when we were on tour in South Africa, Nella, Nella was rooming with um, Hunter, what uh, Hunter Pasami, and um, convinced him there was that the room was haunted, so he, he couldn't sleep there all, all, um, all tour because he he kept playing. Uh, crying baby noises at like 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I thought I went to places haunted and have to sleep on Chrissy's floor. So it's, um, yeah, it's a pretty good group like that where they all just um, like having a bit of fun and then can switch on on the field and, and get the hard work done. Yeah, well, you're talking about that's, that's a tour pre-COVID and we're talking about like Super Rugby Australia now and, and the groups together, you can see that you enjoy each other's company. Must have been difficult during COVID-19 where there was none of that. Like the everything changed, the world changed, and then you had to do a lot of training individually. Just just talk us through that period. Firstly, when when you first got notified that that was going to be the case, and just how you managed that personally, but also and how you communicated as a team through that period. Yeah, it was it was quite weird. We um we went in. We had a you know a pretty tough start to the season with a with a worldwide tour, and and then over to Christchurch as well with the Crusaders. So um, we were really eyeing off that buy by the time it came. So. Uh, we played the Bulls, and then uh, I think that Monday was after the Bulls game was when they were going to move crowds to no more than 500 people, and we had our buy, so um, we just escaped that. And then after that, it just didn't. It just happened so quickly. They yeah. um, pretty much told us um, not to come in that week, uh, and then from there they were like, "All right, everyone needs to come in and raid a bit of equipment from the gym. Everyone took home their bits and bobs, a couple dumbbells and stuff like that, and." and made do with what we could and it was it was weird because you had to prepare as if it was going to be you know three months four months very well could have just been two weeks um so it was that uncertainty which was quite weird uh initially we kept in touch quite a bit through zoom calls and stuff trying to just keep it going and then um our management and our leadership team and the coaches um i think they made a good call to sort of just call a wrap on the season review it, get our sort of defence and attack reviews going, um, get the boys involved in that and reviewing their own games and then just put an end to that one, knowing that there'd be a new sort of comp coming up. Yes, yeah, smart. really helpful so that you weren't trying to just carry on for, for four months. You could almost refresh. We had a couple of weeks sort of away from, you know, all the Zoom meetings and the program and just keep our training up by ourselves, um, which was really good for the boys to refresh and come in sort of with a, with a new slate for this new comp. Um, otherwise, the training itself was was quite good. We had, you know, little groups that we um, tried to send, like, you know, a speed group, a strength group, a um, losing weight group sort of thing. Yeah. Um, chub club. Yeah. There's still a chub yeah. club. There's always a chub club. Yeah, yeah, chub yeah, club. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, they would, there'd be videos sent through of people, you know, what their home gym setup was like. Um, the WhatsApp was pretty busy the whole time because... You know, as we said, it's a close group, good mates. You hang out with them every day. So to not see him suddenly for three months um, was strange. And so the WhatsApp was going off the whole time, showing what people were up to, um, if they were playing golf or whatever they could do at the time. And um, so, yeah, it was that was just our way to do it. And and I think the boys actually relished the training. A lot of people come in with better results. So yeah. um, it was almost a good opportunity to... I know I really enjoyed being able to work on... Um, you know, little individual areas that you often can't um, fix up little niggling injuries, do some some really good sort of distinct rehab like that. Yeah. Um, and then when we came back, that first two weeks, even though we we're in groups of 10, it was just, everyone's just pumped to be back around each other. So um, yeah. it just sort of speaks to that. Yeah, you get a sense of that with the, watching it from the sideline. A number of players have come back in, they're looking in better shape than when, the season normally started because if you think about it, particularly last year's a rugby world cup year, yourself included part of that wallaby squad. You often only have a four or six week block before you're back into it, so it's almost like you're just maintaining, chasing your tail a little bit, so to speak. But you're forced to have, well, you, through COVID, you had a great chance to work athletically 
in a way which um, I think it makes you appreciate getting back together, doesn't it? It makes you appreciate the gains that you can um, you can achieve when you get a really focused block of training, even though it was forced. You can see the benefits of it. Really unusual in in the modern game, which people people often forget. They think, oh, they just they're like robots. They'll they'll turn around every eleven after eleven month season. They'll be, they'll be back on track within four weeks. But um, that yeah. block of training, I think everyone coaches as well a real chance for them to take a breath and and as you said put a full stop in one season and then approach this season are you approaching and i was probably asking the question again are you approaching a bit more like a sprint because of that yeah definitely and you know a focus of ours was to get um you know that refresh that sort of switch off um we wanted people to find hobbies outside of rugby you know work on themselves a bit uh do some uni pick up a I don't know, a bit of TAFE or something mm. and, yep. and just find some balance in their life. And that's been a big focus coming back now as well. Sort of, um, it's almost a bit like an NRC sort of style where, um, yeah, it's, it's a sprint and you can't afford to drop games. So, um, you know, having balanced people and balanced players um, makes you better footy players. That's a big thing Thorny's, Thorny goes on about. So, um, yeah, now we've sort of come in and, and had that break and that refresh, which you, you never get, like, um, I know we think like we're training all the time, but it's not often you get to train where you're not getting beat up on a Saturday or yeah. with free and you can really make those physical gains. So um, now we're just trying to trying to keep that up and, and put it to good use and um, just find our flows again because it is a sprint and you can't you can't afford to to start slowly. And um, you know we got off to a good round one win. Um, still didn't play well to our structures really, which is. Um, I guess a positive for us as well that yeah. um, we found a way to win finally without playing our best footy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's just what we got to keep going up, and we got to buy after this force game, uh, which has come at a pretty good time. So uh, yeah, we just keep looking to that and just keep building each week because um, you've got to peak at the right time, obviously, but you can't afford to to miss it, miss the jump. Yeah, I'll get on to the force game in, in a minute, but I, your, your response there, what Thorny was saying, what you were talking about, that balance is a really important piece, isn't it? I spoke to Rob Simmons last week and, and everyone, like some might do a bit of extra study, etc. Some might work on a hobby, some might work on their golf game. What, what was it specifically for you that you used as, as a downtime slash hobby or, or, or work, a work on for yourself during that COVID period? Yeah, mine was I um I picked up uni again, so I'm I'm doing a, a master's of business now at QUT, which was um I I finished my bachelor's probably two years ago, but um I just found in 2019 I, I didn't do any uni with with rugby, just took a year off it, and um, which was pretty nice, you know, not just having being able to focus on the one thing, um, but at the same time I felt like when um, yeah, I felt like my balance was off when I, when rugby, you know, if I didn't have a good game or something, it affected my whole week until the next game and you could prove it right or wrong. And um, I just didn't have anything else to do. When I came back from footy, I'd, I'd be, I don't know, just sitting on the couch or something and, and just not really being that productive. Um, so I picked that up and that was really good and um, just gave me something else to, to take your mind off and distract. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed that during the break. And, and otherwise I had... I live with um, with three other blokes who play at East Rugby Union yep. up here. So, Tigers, isn't it? The t- Tigers, Tigers yeah, Dave Wilson good. played for East. That's it, the Tigers? Yeah, he did. Yeah, down at Tigerland. So um, it was just good having them around and, and people to do things with. And, you know, we just shot hoops in the backyard or um, we had the home gym set up there. So we were constantly pushing each other and that. And uh, it was just fun to hang out with them and train with them and keep busy like that as well, get a bit of time um, off the footy field. Yeah, important, really important, that, that balance, as you said earlier. It's critical, even more so um, with the modern player. I think that's probably one of the post-COVID traits that you might want to continue through the group, and it sounds like you're doing that with the Reds. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. and so, again, I sort of asked about the force, what's coming up. I saw them play last weekend. They had a really impressive first half against Waratahs at the SCG. What are you expecting from the force? Yeah, we're expecting them to kick quite a lot. Uh, like you said, that that first half they uh, they just kept putting scoreboard pressure on the Tars, which which made them you know go for a few big plays which didn't work off, and then they just add another three points. Um, Prior just has a sharpshooter boot. Um, same with Jono, put up some really good kicks and and just forced the Tars into their half and trusted their defense to to make and make mistakes. So they got an exciting back row as well. Um, you know, Stander and Stowers and and um, they're 7-2. They were just 
all over the park. Their tight five, um, their set piece is quite clinical too. Um, their scrum did well against the Tars and their line out was, was solid as well, which, um, you know, hasn't been so much the case for us in Super Rugby so far. So um, we're going to have to improve that aspect of us and, and uh, just bring the same sort of defensive intensity that we did. Um, we know that if we, we don't let people break our line and keep tackling for each other, our attack will just find its flow. Um, and we're not far off there. So uh, we just hold them to less to, to a few points. Um, you now our dear coach usually says less than two, two tries or less. Um, yep. You often win the game. So um, that's our main focus. We know they'll kick us, kick us well and, and we just uh, hold on to the ball for them. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Like, if you, that's a really good. I think there's so much data in rugby and, and all sports now, but that's a really good team goal. If you can keep them two tries or less, I think most teams are going to be scoring under 20 points. And if if you're doing that, and yeah. as you as you showcased earlier in the year, you guys can score 30 plus points when you find your rhythm and you find your flow. So no, they're they're good things to talk about, aren't they? Because often people get a bit obsessed on one side of the ball. But I think particularly with the new laws, on both sides of the ball, how have you found adapting to these new law changes? Yeah, I found the breakdown quite interesting. Um, I probably wasn't that receptive to it at the start, but upon watching the New Zealand rugby for the first few weeks as well, you can see how it really speeds up the game and, and brings in that fatigue factor, which is actually quite good. So I'm enjoying that. Um, I think that's been applied pretty well for the most part into Super Rugby AU as well. So um, the breakdown changes haven't been too bad. I've, I've actually liked them. Um, the the fifty twenty twos and stuff like that, yeah. they're just huge momentum shifts, and you've got a um, they can really be get out of jail cards. We got a few against the Tars, which just um, changed the swing of things in the second half when we'd completely lost some momentum against them. Uh, Tady and Heggs got one where it, it yeah. changed the game because you you just suddenly in their half and it's your ball again, and um, so those prove really well. And you've just got to be able to stay on top of the momentum and. Um, that's the main thing I'm finding, that they're just huge momentum shifts and you don't get too many of those in rugby and, and to wrestle it back can be quite tough. So um, making the most of those has proved really important. Um, and that goal line dropout stuff has been pretty cool too. We um, we like our scrums, obviously, at Queensland with yeah. you know our, our strong tight five and that. Yeah. But um, it's pretty cool seeing a tight head prop run it back from 60 metres and um, so yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. It brings it brings a bit of flair to the footy, which which um, I'm all for. Yeah, it is good. It is, and it just brings it's a bit of a mixed strategy. And it's a different approach, team to team, depending upon what your strengths are. But yeah. uh, not yeah. from 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 observing both in the, from what's happening across the ditch, but also here, you've seen I think teams and coaches have adapted really really well, and I think that's just going to get better and better as as the course of the season progresses. Yeah, yeah, and you'll just learn how to deal with them and then eventually there'll be new little strategies to take even more advantage of them. So um, I think as a week-by-week -week basis goes by, you'll, you'll find more and more little kinks in the armour there. Yeah. I agree, mate. Well, mate, I think thank you for your time. I know it's busy. I'm looking at the clock. It's nearly 11.30. You've got things to do, Skip. You've you got, got to go plan for the, the battle ahead against the force, but thanks yeah, for your time right. and thanks for the insights into your team as well. And no. uh, keep up the good work. It looks like you've started Super Rugby Australia on the right foot. And uh, as you know, it's a matter. You said it's a sprint. So good luck maintaining that form. Awesome. Thanks, Craig. Appreciate it. Good on you, Liam. Cheers, mate. Cheers.